T gang. It's your boy with the fat swaggy reaction. We are back with another reaction video, man. And today, man, shout out to your man, Chills, man. And I know I'm late, man. I know I'm late. I, like, I just got caught up doing some things, man. But hey, man, like better late than never. Better late than never. But Chills dropped this at like 11 o'clock anyway. So it's like, hey, it is what it is. Like today, we... If you guys checking this video out for the first time, and I upload a scary video every night at midnight. Clearly, it's past midnight, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, man, I I got y'all. I got y'all, man. So, like, he, he dropped a new video around 11 o'clock tonight, man. And um, it's five, I mean, scary videos I don't know, you will regret watching. So, we'll definitely see about that. So, if you guys, again, uh, checking this video out for the first time, please make sure you guys like, share, comment. And subscribe, man. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and hop into this, yo. Let's get it, chills. These are the types of creepy videos that left people never feeling the same again. Number five. I covered Peggy the Headache doll a while ago, but she is up to new antics at a different location that's really creepy. This cursed doll, believed to be possessed by the angry spirit of a girl who lost her life during the 1930s, does not appreciate being gawked at by visitors for money as the CCTV video shows. Peggy squares up with a random woman as soon as she enters the exhibit. It looks like the woman could have tripped, but look closer. There's no step, nothing to trip over. The floor is even. Her feet are firmly planted on the floor. She goes to lean on the doorway and one hand flies up to her chest, the other grabbing the wall to keep from getting shoved over. Shoving is just one of the many reasons why Peggy can never stay housed in one place for long. Her previous owner, a famous paranormal investigator named Jane Harris, shipped the doll all the way from the UK to America because she feared for her life. The really? doll has been known to cause migraines heart problems, and lifelong problems in otherwise healthy people. And in case you were wondering, yes, just looking at her on video is enough to bring a lifetime of bad luck. Peggy now resides in Zach Baggins Haunted Museum in Clark County, Nevada, a place where visitors already expect to be cursed and paranormally pestered anyway. So in this regard, she actually fits right in with the other haunted artifacts. <laughs> It's not uncommon for the more sensitive of visitors to pass out. This like that's why like like my daughter probably are like uh, like I mean she like dogs but listen bro. I give her a certain amount bro because I don't got time. Look, I know this is all like you know what I'm saying. These are 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 known to be hunted dogs, but we don't really know, bro. We don't really know about all dogs, bro. So. <laughs> Whenever my daughter wants something, I gotta ex examine it first. I don't got time for it. This woman drops face first to the ground in front of a wall of cursed items, so it's hard to say which one in particular got to her. It's also possible that she psyched herself out and passed out from fear, but as a concerned crowd gathers around her, Zach Baggins notices a mysterious white light fly away like a ghost in retreat. I personally suspect it could be a bug and a coincidence. So much weird behavior happens here that I suspect visitors really are being influenced by the abundance of paranormal energy around them. Possibly. Not too long after the woman passes out, a second man abruptly stiffens up and stares down an employee who is dressed as a hell? clown. She does absolutely nothing to provoke him, but he towers over her for no reason at all as if he's being possessed. Maybe something evil in the room was stirring them all up. Like, and they had a party doing this, and he's just sitting there looking at, bro, that's some weird shit. I would feel so uncomfortable, bro. Like, for real. Like, you just sitting here looking at me, like, not moving, not blinking or nothing. Oh, no, nah, bro. Hell no. Uh, number four. Hell no. Connor is an urban explorer from the UK who has been making urbex videos for over three years and has had his share of Yuri encounters. The Explorer Returns is the name of his channel, and on it are two places in particular that I bet he wished he never stepped foot in. One of them is the Merrick Park Nursing Home. Shut down in 2014, the nursing home became the center of controversy after two residents lost their lives due to neglect. Oh, An investigation Lord. revealed the elderly were being fed medication that was out of date and didn't work. They were also helplessly exposed in Damn, cold water baths bro. for prolonged periods of time. Ah, cold water baths? That has to be... <laughs> yeah, yo, I don't... 
like, like, bro, like, is it just me or do I like my shit to be either warm or hot? Who takes cold baths? Like, who does that, bro? Like, like, please let me know down in the comment section. Like, if you guys take, take cold showers, bro. If so, what do that feel like, bro? Because that has to be one of the harshest. Well, I wouldn't say harshest. Uh, things, but like for like an older person taking cold showers, bro. Nah, bro. Hell nah. They were also helplessly exposed in cold water baths for prolonged periods of time no and way. other mistreatments that no one should have to endure. It's pitch black outside when Connor and his friend Daniel find the place, and the inside is just as dark. His flashlight combs across room after room filled with flowers sent by family members who had no idea what miserable conditions their loved ones were being kept in. The doors still have names on them and the residents seem to respond to having their name read aloud. Connor enters one room and a feeling of intense unease makes him let out an involuntary moan. A woman's laughter comes from the corner of the room by a pile of her former possessions that are no doubt teeming with energy from her passing. Like I said before, it's only Connor and Daniel, so they shouldn't be hearing any other voices, let alone a laugh like this one. At any rate, the spirits seem really- I can barely hear that, honestly. I, I mean, I can hear him moan, but I can barely hear her- her, uh, her laugh. They shouldn't be hearing any other voices, let alone a laugh like this one. <laughs> at any hey, rate, no, the I spirits seem relatively friendly until they make a mistake at 2 minutes and 19 seconds by wiping some leaves off of these two names with their shoe. Oh, they meant boy. no disrespect by the gesture, just the opposite actually, but stepping on the names of those who have passed in their own home is bound not to go over well. After all, these spirits have already experienced enough mistreatment when they were still alive. Thanks. Connor steps at the doorway of a laundry room lined with someone's clothes. He doesn't notice the arm of the shirt sleeve move on its own. It's probably just a draft uh, from the open window delete. now that I look closer right. at it, but that still doesn't explain the angry eyes peering at him from within. Okay. They somehow miss this and instead focus on something upstairs. The power is off and yet, a strange chime oh, takes no. them up a Oh no, I, it, it, that shit looks scary as fuck. Ain't no way I'm finna walk up there. No way. Floor. The tension grows as they track it from room to room until the source is only a few feet away. <laughs> they find a motion sensor that stays on for as long as the door remains open. However, it wasn't going off until recently, so that means the door must have just opened when no one was on that floor. What? It's weird, but they're more relieved it's not an alarm, so they press on to the third floor. Holes in the roof have left some rooms filled with leaves and open to the elements. They don't find much up here, and when they are ready to leave, their suspicions about opening doors are confirmed. Damn. Nothing, just empty just rooms. I told you. The door that they had clearly left open at 12 minutes and 50 seconds is now mysteriously closed. Oh, wow. Either it has shut on its own, which is certainly possible because it's pretty thin and lightweight, or else something closed it besides them. As they are leaving the Merrick Park nursing home, the camera picks up a final occurrence. Listen. The craziest of all though has to be when Connor explores an abandoned asylum at 1 in the morning. Through the woods and under a gate lies the hapless estate where many were held their entire lives. It takes Connor 8 minutes just to find an unboarded window and by then he is almost too fearful to venture inside. Aside from the paranormal, this looks to be a possible hangout for tough locals as well. The inside is completely and unnaturally silent. The house doesn't creak, crack or settle at all. That shit looks so fucking scary. Oh, I... Connor keeps hearing things that don't register up on camera, and he suspects that something is in the large room with him. He sets up a K2 meter to detect electromagnetic energy but finds none. 
He talks out loud to a spirit who apparently isn't there, then gets moving again. Or maybe the spirit was listening close oh, by all along. Yo! Was that so isn't there yeah, then gets moving again or maybe this no that's probably so, like one of his peoples but y'all see him right here though standing right here i think that's one of his peoples though okay i about because i was about to trip fear was listening close by all along this comes stands when he goes into the next room, he catches on camera a fleeting glimpse of a tall shadow at 12 minutes and 15 Wait. seconds. He doesn't see the shadow man in real life. Oh, hold up. So that wasn't one of his people. Oh, Lord. I thought it was one of his his homeboys, bro. So that was a ghost? That shit looked like a real... Nah, hell nah. Ah, I don't know about that one. But that looked like, I, mean, I thought it was his homeboy. Though. All shadow at 12 minutes and 15 seconds. He doesn't see the shadow man in real life, but his equipment oh, certainly does. That's it's crazy. not graffiti either. If that's what you were thinking. Like, how do you not see that if that, not like, come on, bro, what? That clearly looked like just someone standing there, like on a, on a phone or something. That looks like, I don't know, bro. Because when he comes back downstairs and turns at 17 minutes, 4 seconds, the wall it was standing against is clean. It's nowhere to be found. That's Meanwhile, crazy. the room where Connor left his K2 meter suddenly experiences odd activity as a mysterious white light slowly grows into a beam for a full minute from 15 mm. minutes and 15 seconds to 16 minutes and 15 seconds and then fades away. He goes back to the K2 meter and runs some more experiments. None of his questions get any answers, and it doesn't seem interested in communicating with him at all. Or at least not as much as it wants to from a distance. He sets up the K2 meter in another room and decides if this doesn't work then he will end the investigation. He doesn't know that he has already caught both a shadow figure and a mysterious white light on tape already really? and is growing somewhat frustrated. Just when he is ready to give up, the shadow man returns. And as he quivers in the cold, he fails to miss two eyes looking at him from the doorway where the uh. footsteps just were. The K2 meter oh, still wow. hasn't gone off, but that's because it's not in the room with him. It's clearly waiting just outside. Upon announcing that this investigation is over, the Shadow Man takes it upon himself oh, to walk into the same room and make itself known. Oh lord. Like why do you want to go messing I mean, with, like just, just get out of there. Like you just said you were done. So be done. Like just go bro. <laughs> Number 3. Dwayne Ragland of New Orleans, Louisiana is the extra friendly host of the Paranormal Encrypted channel on YouTube. He seems to almost always be in a good mood and isn't afraid to joke around with friendly spirits and talk trash to unfriendly ones. So joke around with the ghosts? Like, like you think they want to have fun right now? <laughs> no, they're ghosts. They don't want to have fun. He knows just what to say to rile them up and then gets them back under control. Take this exploration of a local New Orleans church for example. The place is in the early stages of collapse and rotten this down to the bad. foundation. Ceiling rafters with loose nails hang low. I'd say in another year any supernatural entities inhabiting this area won't have a place left to haunt. His two friends Alan and Rosie have been here once before and know exactly where to look. There's a back room where they heard a demon growl before, so that's where Dwayne begins his journey. He doesn't see anything, but I do. I want to find a place to set up a live stream or do a spirit box. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They look like a face right there, too. Do a spirit box. Well, bro, like, did that not look like a face that's. It's like. Peeking. Am I tripping? Look at it. Am I tripping? Live stream. I do a spirit box. Nah, bro. That look like something right there, bro. 
What? Wow, no season. They are it's a demonic little figure with a tuft of black hair, swaddled in brown robes, that dips in and out of the shadows. When they go back into the main room, Alan has a camera malfunction. My uh, camera just shut off. I believe. I know, we charged them all. And my battery's brand new right now. Please. Huh. That's they crazy. decide this is as good a spot as any to set up the spirit box, and it seems their instincts were entirely accurate. Dwayne gets an answer on the first try. Is anybody want to talk? Soon a woman steps forward to chat, but right before he can get her name. Anybody want to talk? Hi. Hi. What's your name? Something else interrupts her. A presence named hey, Pete who doesn't want anything to do with them. Anybody want help? And whose disagreeable attitude seems to persuade the other one to follow suit. Yo. Hello, y'all wanna play? No. You know? Are you scared? Listen to what happens when Dwayne asks the spirit if they're mad. Don't listen to the spirit box, listen to the background. Are you mad? Kinda. <laughs> Two voices talk to Dwayne the whole time. Pete and the girl with no name. Dwayne gets them riled up for a few minutes, encouraging them to taunt him more and more. He's talking about how he See? hopes he doesn't... See, like, I mean, he like to do shit like that. Like, he, like, like clearly, clearly, like, he just, like, a professional professional because cause he can get the the uh, ghost mad and then calm him back down again. Like, what? I didn't think. Okay. Okay. And it's encouraging them to taunt him more and more. He's talking about how he hopes he doesn't step on a nail when finally the spirits have had enough and decide to send him to the floor. I got to step on a Nail break, break. Might no. possibly lose a foot or a leg. Whoa. Right? Yeah, the floor give. Oh Pete shit. Pete says break break moments before the floor gives way. And when Dwayne gets up, the man and woman mock his shortness of breath. Oh, oh. Alright. Bro, I'm getting attacked. Okay. So he's either continuing to get messed up by ghostly presences here. Hey, but here. you brought it on yourself. Like you pretty much, uh, 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 I mean, poking, I mean, poking the ghost. I mean, poking fun at him. What you expect to happen? Like you egging him on. Or else he stood up too fast and is getting a head rush. My head feels like a million needles is sticking in it, all in my what? forehead. I ain't leaving. <laughs> Demon, why don't you? Oh. Oh. No, I got just got pushed. Shortly after he gets pushed, his dog senses something and cowers behind Rosie, clearly ready. <laughs> uh, bro, dog, but a dog supposed to be protecting you. Like, why the dog scared? That, like, that's not no. It <laughs> was the dog behind it. No, you supposed to be protecting us. What are you doing? To leave. Like you're fired. They decide to leave before it brings the whole building down on them and go over to the graveyard nearby. Pete follows and lets Dwayne know it's not over yet. Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh, Alan and Rosie. Uh, Bro. Bro. <laughs> I ain't never come so close to falling so many times just in a few minutes. A few minutes later, they all agree it's time to go. Thank it's you. the right decision in my opinion. Number 2. Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigations, led by Nick Sarlo, is an underground society with 15 years of experience hunting spirits in and around years. Lake County, Illinois. Nick had his first paranormal experience at the age of 17 and formed the Shadow Hunters as a way to better understand it. Don't fear what you can't see is their motto.
On October 11th, 2016, the Shadow Hunters took to the Pollock Hospital in Bartonville, a medical building with no terrible stories of neglectful management to speak of for a pleasant change. The patients were actually given the best treatments available, and hell? somehow that's what makes its history even sadder. You see, even though the nurses were doing all they could, the hospital was built in 1949. The sheer number of patients who lost their lives in pure misery virtually guaranteed the building would be haunted forevermore. No less than four cemeteries now surround the property. Oh. That's how many lives were lost. The hospital shuttered its doors in 1973, but some supernatural odds and ends are said to still roam the hospital halls. Unaware that their allotted time on Earth expired long ago, the Shadow Hunters now hope to respectfully document their presence. Nick and his team head to a section of the women's ward where patients with no chance of surviving were sent to pass. In this room is a ghost with a penchant for grabbing men so they set up motion sensors and line up two volunteers. It isn't long before Nick is having trouble finishing his sentence because of how he is being handled. I'm not kidding me. Or I'm not kidding. What? What? She's touching my right now. The K2 what? meter does detect electromagnetic activity when Terry holds it to where Nick says that he is being grabbed. <laughs> Yo, he... <laughs> He said the ghost is touching his wee wee right now, my God. Yo, that is crazy, bro. She horny, cuz. She trying to get them, them cheats clapped. <laughs> them ghostly cheats clapped. <laughs> Electromagnetic activity. When Terry holds it to where Nick Yo. says that he is being grabbed, it could be simply detecting the electromagnetic activity of a cell phone in his pocket, if he has one. But at the same time, it does back up his claims that a ghost is near. Also, look what happens when Nick wants to show if anyone else is in the room oh, with them. Hold up! Hey, 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 hey. Did that just start? No, that started moving. Holy quacamole burgers. And now you're showing off on detection. <laughs> A big wooden spool roll. Hey, bro, she trying to give you a goddamn a blowjob or something, my guy. Cause she lo cause she obviously down there, my guy. So you might have been gonna get. Pulls <laughs> towards neck with a forward momentum generated from nowhere. The K2 meter lights up excitedly as Nick steps back. And I'm talking about the ghost, obviously. So don't be a perv and don't think I'm talking about the lady. I'm obviously talking about the ghost because he said that she was touching. Whatever, whatever. I don't got to explain myself. Proof to them that the ghost is near. Later that day, they leave to explore the nearby four cemeteries, mm. but not before setting up cameras around Yo, the Pollock Hospital first. And wait until you see what happens around this area. They claim nobody was down there, and yet something definitely was messing with the camera, ghost or otherwise. The next night, they get a spirit to spin atop for exactly 20 seconds before it turns over. A rocking chair moves by itself despite the fact that Terry's yeah. arms are crossed, Nick's hands are in his lap, and their feet are too far away. I suppose a third investigator could be laying on the floor to create this illusion, so it's too bad we never get to see all of the rocking chair to make sure. Anyway, after catching so many paranormal events on camera, it should come as no surprise that Nick's home has inevitably become haunted over the years. Something lurks in the surrounding woods too, something that makes people feel sick and watched at the same time. A shadow figure that they have taken a picture of once before and hope to capture on video tonight for better evidence. On November 9th, 2019, they decide to confront it once and for all. They return to the same area of the woods and detect nothing. So then they sit at the playground at the outskirts of the woods and wait. A strange feeling soon washes over them and they know it's near. They play back digital voice recordings of themselves and hear something that does not belong. Yeah, the car is going by. Okay, that was not good. They think it says fire, but I hear a girl whisper, find me. Then it says exactly where to look. Right about when this happens, the faintest of shadows passes by Ashley's camera, a brief change in the light. That's almost imperceptible unless you already know where to look. Don't be disappointed if you still can't see it. In fact, consider yourself lucky. I've got a challenge for you. I mean, I didn't see it. I mean, I didn't see it. Number one.
This channel has been getting really popular with the Spanish-speaking YouTube community, and due to that popularity, I decided to analyze it. Specifically, one picture that I came across that I'll get to in just a moment. Bob is a man who operates a YouTube channel and declared years ago that he's possessed by a spirit. According to him, the spirit's ultimate goal is to destroy him, and there's nothing he can do to save himself, since it's all caused by powers beyond his control. Anyway, this picture has recently made rounds online in the Spanish-speaking YouTube community. In it, there appears to be a hand that sticks out the back of his SUV and seems to be reaching out for help, possibly trying to get the attention of the car behind them. Meanwhile, Bob stares at the camera with a dazed and perhaps slightly angry expression, though it's hard to tell what kind of mood he's in, to be honest. I went to his channel hoping to find the original thumbnail image for comparison purposes, but I was unable to find it. A quick look at his YouTube channel reveals that a lot of his thumbnails are car selfies, and none of them have a hand in the background, so my guess is that someone took a still frame from one of his videos and just photoshopped the hand in, and if we enhance oh, wow. it, the outline of the hand looks kind of wrong, like it was cut and pasted into the okay, shot. Okay, so I'm about to say, bro, ain't no way, bro, like they really just... Yo, about to say. Conclusion. I don't think he's driving around with anything like that in the back seat. Okay. Nothing facts. can prepare facts. you for facts, bro. Shout out to my man Chills, bro. That was five scary videos that you will regret watching. I don't regret watching that, bro. Uh, I mean, I don't regret watching it. it. Like, it was a good, good video, man. Chills, you did your thing, bro. Again, guys, sorry for the late upload, man, but hey. It's better like late than never. Now I'm saying I'm here. I got y'all. And tomorrow I, I will be on time tomorrow. I promise y'all. I'll be on time tomorrow. So whoever dropped something, I got y'all, man. And the SRT gang. I'm out this thing, man. Let's get it.